Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for June the 22nd. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today's scripture reading is found in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and Acts chapter 2 verses 25 through 47. The title of my devotional is Jesus, Lord and Christ. And we're looking at Acts 2 verse 36. This is the concluding verse of Peter's Pentecost sermon. We see there, therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is Peter's main point, where he has been driving through the whole sermon. He sums up the most important aspects of his gospel message and also sums up the importance of Pentecost. What is Pentecost all about? What is it for? Um, And so first, let's take a look at what does he mean, what does Peter mean that God has made him both Lord and Christ. First of all, made does not mean to bring about or create, but rather to appoint or establish. Jesus was Lord and Christ from the beginning. Always God's appointed one. Always the one who bears the spirit. Always God's king, God's chosen one who would rule and reign over all. So it was always God's purpose, plan, and action that resulted, though, also in Jesus' authoritative role. Or it was his plan that would result in him being established in that role over all. Jesus is the Lord declared in this context in Psalm 110, verse 1, and Joel 2, verse 32. In Psalm 110, verse 1, we see the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Now, that was the previous verse in Acts 2, verse 35. And also, Joel 2, verse 32 is where he, um, this is the last verse of the quotation from Joel that Peter begins his sermon with back in Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And Joel 2, 32 says, And it will come about that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be delivered. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be those who escape, as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. So the question is, who is the, or what is the name of the Lord upon, up, and who is the one upon whom we should call? Well, of course, it's Yahweh from the Old Testament, but we're also, we also see here that God has made Jesus the Lord upon whom we call. It's upon his name that we call. That's why in um, Romans chapter 10, uh, verses 9 and 10, we see that a person is saved by confessing that Jesus is Lord and believing in his heart that God raised him from the dead. We receive salvation. So um, Jesus is none other, none other than God the Son, and he alone is responsible for distributing salvation's benefits as witnessed at Pentecost in the pouring out of the Spirit. Jesus became the sacrifice, the mediator of our redemption, and then he distributes those as King and Lord over all. So he is both Christ and he is Lord over all. All And it's witnessed at Pentecost and onward that Jesus continues to pour out the Spirit. He continues to draw people to himself, change, he receives them to himself, he gives them a new heart, a new spirit, and then he makes them witnesses. His reign is seen not only through their salvation, but his reign is seen through their work and ministry as well. Jesus himself, it's important to realize, did not become someone different after his resurrection and ascension, but rather he assumed simply a new role as a result of the exaltation by the Father. So Christ is the title for God's promised deliverer, called to be our priest, our prophet, and king. He is the anointed one. He stands for us. He stands with us, and he uniquely bears the Spirit. Jesus is the Messiah in the complete sense as understood by his atoning death, resurrection, exaltation, and pouring out of the Spirit on his people. And that's what we see, for example, Acts 2.33, Therefore, having been exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured forth this which you both see and hear. So this verse that we looked at in terms of Acts 2.36 um, is stating the significance of the incarnation of the Son of God, what it all is about and what it means. One commentator, Daryl Bach, sums up its meaning. Jesus is vindicated so that this crucified one now sits at God's side mediating God's salvific blessing as both Lord and Christ. 
Have you submitted your life to the reign of the one who declared, is declared both Lord and Christ by God? Are you a witness of what Christ has done? And we could look at Acts 1.8. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for what you have done in Jesus Christ. How wonderful it is to be part of your people because Jesus died. Well, first of all, he came, he died, and he's been raised to life and now has been exalted to the right hand of God where he's pouring out the Spirit upon all of his people. How awesome it is that you are mediating God's presence to us. How awesome it is that we have your salvation, we can know you. How awesome it is to be directed by the Spirit of God and have your have your, your power in us and at work in us at all times. Let us be submitted to you. Let us be in communion with you. Let us be directed by your will and your, your word. In your name we pray. Amen.